September 29th, the Finance Committee at 5.30, and uh, we're going to be going over the uh, warrant for the special town meeting, and um, we're just going to go over all the items and put our recommendations in for today. Okay, go ahead, David, and you can go through it with us. All right, so just to give us a little bit of context of where we are, um, so we're still shooting for October 17th, Saturday for the town meeting at 1 p.m. now, not 10 a.m. People were thinking that it would be warmer at 1 than at, than at 10. Right now, it's supposed to be over at the Hadley Elementary School, which is different from where we had the annual because the annual is an active construction site. Um, our local receipts uh, for June, uh, for July and August have come in right on target and our expenses are trending right on target. So the revised budget, the third one that we passed at the town meeting seems to be holding true for the first two months. We also got <clears throat> uh, meals uh, revenue for the first quarter of FY21. And they were a little light, they were about $7,000 off of what we thought we would be bringing in. Not great, not terrible. And we're waiting to see what the, we, uh, uh, what, where the meals tax, uh, the room tax comes in. We should have that information in a day or two. Uh, the governor has um, moved us into step two of phase three. So there's, uh, they've lightened the restrictions on some businesses, mainly performance related businesses now can have uh, um, seating of 250 or 50% of their capacity. Uh, museums, gyms, uh, uh, other such uh, venues are now open. Uh, so it looks like we're making some progress. In terms of the state budget, the um, Senate president has med made public statements that they're not going to be passing a state budget until they find out what the federal government is going to do about lost revenues for municipalities and states. Uh, without getting into political commentary, I don't expect to see any help from Washington DC for the next few weeks. Certainly not enough time for us to set the tax rate and get the, uh, the third quarter tax bills out by December 31st. Um, so no state budget and I don't expect to have one for a while. But the state has told us some important information by which we can navigate. They've told us what our chapter 78 is going to be. And they've told us what our unrestricted general government aid or UGA is going to be. So those are level funded at the 2000 FY 2020 level. And that is good news for us. They've also revealed to us what the state assessments are going to be and the charter and choice assessments have plummeted and all told we are a net gain of $37,800 right now without doing anything with the budget. There are some numbers that are not known. The charter school reimbursement, the state payment for uh, state lands, the veterans exemptions and the um, elderly exemptions on the cherry sheet. But those are not big items and I don't expect to see a lot of wiggle room in those numbers. So not being able to go in front of you and say we have a balanced budget, I'm projecting that we have a bu budget that is close enough in balance that we can proceed with uh, the special town meeting. Special Town Meeting is asking to increase the FY21 budget by $19,200. Uh, and this is almost exclusively for building costs, building operation costs associated with the three new buildings. Now that we actually have them up and going, we actually have some track record and we're using the actuals or better estimates of actuals than we had available back in June. 
Uh, so that accounts for the increase. Everything else that we promised that we would be doing at the annual town meeting, we are doing it with the continuation of this budget at the special town meeting. So that sort of sets the table of where we are. Uh, I need to post the warrant by Friday at the latest if we're going to have a meeting on the 10th, on the 17th. So I understand you're meeting with the select board tomorrow night. So whatever we can't accomplish tonight, we can wrap up tomorrow. Do you have any questions for me while we, before we jump into the warrant? No, oh, that sounds good, David. Okay, Article 1. All right. We received two bills from a company um, uh, in FY20, and the bills didn't come to us until well after the FY20 budget uh, had been closed. And their chemical supplies for the water and sewer department, and they um, were sent to the wrong address. And by the time the bills caught up with us, uh, they uh, we, it was too late. So now we need a nine tenths majority vote from town meeting for $1,955 for two bills. Oh, sorry. Are we gonna take votes on these things right now? Is that how we're? I, yeah. think, I think that would be best. You can always revise a vote later on. Motion to approve. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All right, um, any discussion? No, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And Lexi? Aye. Okay, thank you. All right, Article 2, this is the general fund uh, budget amendment. And uh, the expenses are select board from 22150 that we passed at annual town meeting increase that to $24,050. Uh, and that's uh, strictly for IT related services. Building operations, um, the North Hadley Fire Substation for electricity and other utilities increase that from 14,500 to 23,500. Senior Center increase that uh, building operation budget for 20 from 29.9 hundred to thirty three one hundred and the library uh, from nineteen nineteen thousand two forty two to twenty thousand eight forty two and the library expenses again this is for internet uh, is uh, forty seven thousand nine uh, three ninety one to forty eight three eighty one so all told, it should be an increase of $19,200, if I've got my math right. So is there anything in common with all these rises for all the buildings, or is it just a bunch of different little things? Well, the most, the unifying thing is that for most of them, that uh, we, uh, we were trying our best guess at the annual town meeting for the operational expenses for these new buildings. And now that we actually have a couple of electricity bills and water bills under our belt, uh, we can see that our estimates were a little low. We have to pay water bills to ourselves. Yeah, that's unusual, but we do that. So we just mit uh, underestimated it. Yeah, I mean, we did, did our best guess. Well, it sounds like there's nothing we can do about these things, so we might as well approve it, eh? That's what I'm thinking. I mean, there's, I don't think we have a, I mean, it's, it, I'm not, I'm not happy that, that, that it's a surprise because we kept asking a lot of questions, but what can we do at this point? Yeah. And they've already spent. Everybody made their best guess and we were just off a little bit. And also they're not uh, really operating at full capacity yet, all these buildings, right? So it might go up in the future. Um, I don't expect that actually. No. Okay. No. I... All right, well, motion to approve. Second. 
Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I know Paul Benjamin's trying to get on. Um, so I sent him a couple texts trying to help him out. He was <laughs> trying to get on. So he might be joining us. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, article three is our sweep article. This is a housekeeping article uh, where we take money that um, um, is lying around being unproductive because the projects are now complete. Uh, and we return those monies back to the original pot from which they came. So the first one is the classification compensation plan, which we uh, originally funded at uh, $19,000. It came in less, and so we have $4,000 to return to the capital stabilization. Uh, we also provided uh, $568.07 to the um, ZBA. They never collected on that, so back to the capital, capital stabilization for that. And then we have a North Hadley Village Hall preservation article from CPA for 10 grand. Since we're selling the building, there's no need for this money. Then we have two borrowings that we're effectively canceling. Um, the basement room for 17,500 uh, in town hall, the municipal building committee has decided that they do not want to move forward with that project. And then the capital assets schedule uh, for 6550, the Department of Revenue has uh, made a ruling that that's not eligible for borrowing. So we need to cancel that. So we're returning money and we're canceling borrowing. What was the basement room? I think I must've missed that. This is something that came to us uh, back in 2019. Mm -hmm. The Municipal Building Committee made a presentation to the Capital Planning Commission, the Finance Committee, and the Select Board that they needed to increase the storage capacity uh, in the basement of Town Hall. And they asked for this money. Uh, they've since had a change of, uh, of mind, and, and so they're not going to move forward with that project. So we might as well return, amend our borrowing authorization so we don't clutter up the chart of accounts. Okay. All right. So these are just the regular stuff that we if we don't use. We move back. Like that's we, right. We Housekeeping. Okay. So do I have a motion to for Article Three? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Lexi. I said I. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll say it louder next time. All right, is Paul, that Paul Benjamin? Now. Yes. And Dylan. Uh, hello. Uh, is, there an, is there a video link to this? Yes, there is. Do you see the uh, video? There you are. All I right, called so, in on a phone. I, I need a video link. Let me see if I can send one to you. Thank you. I only got the one for tomorrow's meeting. Give me a moment. Uh, it was sent out in the email an hour ago by Jennifer. Oh, okay. Well, let's see where that went. <laughs> I didn't get any. Can somebody forward it to me? Yeah, Paul, what's your email? Paul at the Benjamin Company dot net. The Benjamin and Company all spelled out. Dot net. The uh, Benjamin. The Benjamin Company. Thank you. Paul the Benjamin Company. Paul at the. Paul, Paul at, at the. the. At the. All right. 
we're going to send this message. It'll be coming from uh, an account called Carol and David One. Okay. Okay, just got it. It actually All came right. from him. Yeah. All right, just give me a sec. I'll get my camera out. Dylan and Paul, we're uh, walking through the warrant right now. We're on Article right. 4. All right. I have arrived. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. 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 Uh, All right. Article four, the revolving for the revolving fund for electronic permits. This is housekeeping. Normally, we uh, re-up the uh, uh, revolving funds at the annual town meeting. Uh, the building inspection department has uh, procured a electronic permitting pro uh, system that is uh, paid to the vendor by a $10 surcharge on every building permit. We have no real good mechanism for paying that $10 per permit surcharge to the vendor uh, unless we put together this revolving fund. Um, so this will keep that burden off the tax rate and uh, it will simplify greatly our ability to pay the vendor for the electronic permitting. Ten dollars a permit, you said, right? That and, yep. and but we put ten thousand dollars is how much we're funding that. Isn't that kind of high for ten dollars a permit? Are we expecting that much income? You're, I mean, not, that... you're not. Uh, you're not. You're uh, not funding it for ten thousand. You're setting the upper cap of ten thousand on it. Okay. So if if they bring in ten thousand and one dollars in a year, then that one dollar gets uh, transferred over to the general fund. Oh, I see. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So it's, it's high and I just put it there because I thought this is the first time we're doing it. Let's shoot a little high, it doesn't hurt us at all. Okay. There's no impact upon the tax rate. So the vendor can't just collect it directly when they collect the funds for the permit? It's uh, billed monthly. Oh. And this is housekeeping. All right, motion to Second. Second. Okay, if there's no more discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the next one is uh, a little bit of uh, housekeeping it's along the lines of truth and justice. Um, let me pull it up here so that I can speak directly to it. All right, so the first is and to fix a, an accounting error. Uh, a former accountant um, mislabeled uh, $32,100 uh, from a school gift account and put it into the general fund. That led, a, this was back in 2020. That led that, um, led to us getting that much more in free cash in FY21. So we had a boost of 32,100 of free cash, but the school lost all their money in this particular grant pot. So we should turn it back. This is something that was noted in the FY19 audit. Uh, so we should turn it back. I was proposing to fund this through free cash, which has not yet been certified. If we don't have certified free cash come October 17th, we're gonna to have to skip this article and give them a promise that we'll bring it back up at the annual town meeting. But we're fixing an accounting error here. So if it's just an error, we should fix it, right? Unless we have a cash flow problem. It's uh, just a matter of putting the cash in the right bucket. So that seems simple enough. 
Anybody have an objection to that? No. You have a motion on this one? I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. So, is there any more discussion? No. All no. in favor? Aye. 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 The second one is uh, Zaturka Park. We um, we overspent the CPA appropriation by fourteen ten dollars, um, and that was an oversight on our part when we were trying to fix the last remaining part of uh, Zaturka Park. We just spent a little bit more than we thought we had available, so our bad. Uh, but this will bring the CPA accounted back into trim. Again, this was notif noticed in our FY19 audit. Is there a reason we didn't get that back from the CPI? Um, Amy, the, I think that the CPA is very concerned about their, their money, right? Uh, I think that they, it's not necessarily, does the CPA not have it, but either way it'd have to go through. And I, and I think that, I think it would be easier to take it out of just the general, and this is why, because the CPA is very much on liking it a process, a certain way that they do things. And if, if this is, it's an oops, it was overspent, okay? But now I'm afraid that it's just gonna bring up a big, huge can of worms, and then the next project they're gonna be looking at and saying it. Go ahead, Linda. Um, it wasn't just that the cap, it wasn't the uh, overspend of the capital, it's that there was a, a subsequent mowing bill, which was charged to that, to, to that article instead. So I'm not sh I, I think you're really crossing purposes there. So if you're concerned that people are going to say you should fund the entire project, there is a way to distinguish what was funded and what this actual expenditure was. It just got into the wrong, it, when that mowing bill came up, it got into the wrong account. Oh, okay. So I, I think it should have come out of whatever, wherever the sub, subsequent to um, the spending in that article on Zaturka Park, we have the town continues and does mowing. So, and I don't know what account that comes out, but um, it's too late now to go back and fix that and make it come out of another account. The only thing to do now is restore CPA funds out of free cash. And it, it shouldn't be an issue on the floor or the grass. Um, so that makes sense to me. If it came out of CPA, but it, if it was for mowing, that's for mowing for maintenance, CPA wouldn't have funded that. That would have had to either be from Park and Rec or from the, the DPW or something. But once CPA gives the project, they don't, won't continue to fund it for, for upkeep and maintenance. That, that's so, how I understand it, uh, Amy. Okay, so then, then shouldn't it go out of either one of those two budgets, whichever? It, it, it's too late, Paul. It's an old, it's a closed year. Okay. And I believe both those budgets returned money to the town at the end of the year. So it's really, okay. you know. All right. I'll make a motion to approve this. Subject. Second. Okay. Uh, um, all in, if there's any more discussion? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so the next one is um, a policy question. And we, uh, we uh, presented this one to the financial management team and they came out with a split recommendation. This was submitted by the, um, the directors and I think Dan Zadonik is available. He can speak to the article, um, but it's an opportunity to provide a little bit of relief, financial relief to income qualified elders, um, which uh, they are able to defer their taxes on property. Um, they are charged an 8% interest rate and the proposed uh, amendment to that is to reduce that 8% on the deferred taxes to 4% beginning on July 1st, 2021. Dan, did I miss anything? Uh, no, that you pretty much covered it. The only thing on this, uh, the assessors look at it as 8% is kind of high in the current economic climate. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about a lot of money here. On the average house, it would cost about $170 a year 
reducing it from 8% to 4%. I think there's only one person who's currently qualified to uh, benefit from this. Is that right? Yeah, I've, I've been doing this for 35 years and I've only had one person in that entire time take advantage of this program. That might be due in part to it being 8% for the rate. Uh, but people may want to, with increases due to the, the buildings uh, and taxes going up, they may want to defer a portion of their taxes. They don't have to defer everything. And only one person has really taken advantage of it so far. And what makes you eligible? How are you eligible for the program? Uh, there's, you have to be a senior and you also have to have income of under 20,000. Okay. So not everybody would qualify for this. Okay. Before we uh, uh, also vote, maybe Linda or Susan can, because you, you both had very good points in the financial management team that um, um, when I would listen to you that I thought were good points. Well, I actually spoke, I spoke against it and I'm not going, I don't want to continue sp sp speaking against it, but uh, as Dan said, there was one, uh, we have one person and that, and it doesn't matter though, you know, if, if the principle is correct, it doesn't matter whether we have one or 10 people. Um, but the, my point was that they're not, that person, individuals, um, since this is a deferral generally for life, they're not the ones who are going to end up paying the taxes it's the ultimate heirs to it. I think the greatest benefit to the individuals from this program is having the actual corpus of the taxes deferred each year. That's the large benefit. I'm not sure four or eight percent. And I and I guess just in in general, um, I know that in, we pay um, taxpayers pay fourteen and sixteen percent for late taxes. So, and by comparison, eight percent is is pretty good. And um, if we want to give a benefit, whether it's to elders or to taxpayers, um, I just in general prefer something that would be a, across the board um, and apply to more people. So that's what I have had said before. I still feel that way, but I'm not going to go and I, I'm really not going to make an issue of this. I don't remember what Susan said, but go I, ahead, Susan. I thought that was good points. Very good points. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I just think it's uh, an additional tool in the toolbox uh, for some of our seniors to use to be able to stay in their homes. Um, and again, it doesn't happen often in Hadley, but I think the affordable ability to do that is, is worth considering this. Well, that's basically the nub of it is, are we going to be <laughs> in our best interest to uh, serve the taxpayers uh, or is it in our best interest to serve the, uh, the, the income qualified uh, seniors? And would this be permanent moving forward or is this some sort of measure in the time of COVID with some sort of a sunset? Well, most, uh, there are, numerous towns in the, the state that they already dropped their deferral rate to 4% because it allows people to stay in their homes. And, and they end up with a lien on their home that that has to be paid back prior to being able to sell the home. So it, it's kind of like end of life uh. type issues. So, um, I, I guess that pulls at my heartstrings. And I think at 4%, which is a lot more than we can borrow at now, it's worth doing that for our elderly taxpayers. Is there any other mechanism besides the income, which I think could be gamed, uh, now that we have some high dollar residences in town, like, is there any limit on the value of the property or the total amount of taxes deferred or anything like that. I mean, I, I would totally support this for the right purpose, but I'd hate to see us open some weird loophole. No? Dan, you know. Uh, 
basically, as long as they just own their home, there really isn't an asset limit on it. I mean, if they own their home and three other homes in town, they're not going to be getting this. And if they own three other homes, they can't do it. What is no, that? no, if it, it basically excludes the value of their home of the house and the property that they're living on. It's like all the other senior exemptions that we have. I'm just trying to understand this. So let's say that a person has a reverse mortgage on their home, for instance. And so it's um, that value is no longer there, you know, because I'm assuming that a bank would have, mm -hmm. first, would have you know, have first right to whatever value is in the home. Um, what happens to that tax bill? Uh, under tax liens, we're first. We're we always first. Before any mortgage. And, and also the tax is assessed on the value of the house, the gross, the, the, real, the market value of the house without regard to whether there's other liens on it. It's, that would be cool if you could reduce the tax rate. <laughs> Take our, the value of our mortgages off first. That would be good, but no, it is. Well, no, I, I guess what I mean is that, you know, it, um, if there is a lien on the property, um, uh, there are probably other liens that take precedence. So would there be a situation where we don't get our taxes because that value no. is not? No. no. We are first. We are first. Oh, we're first. Okay. Even, even, okay. even in a case where the, 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 where the mortgage existed before the lien, correct? Yes. Right. Oh, right. And I, right. So the only, right. I guess the only thing I, I want to understand is that I'm hearing that someone gets a deferral because of that, they're going to stay in their house, correct? Yes. But this isn't affecting the deferral. It's no. just affecting the cost of the deferral, correct? Correct. Right. So the person making the decision to take advantage of the deferral and stay at their house, I guess the question is, are they going to make that decision based on 8% or 5% or 4% or 2% or whether it was free because they're not the ones who are going to make up for that. It's going to get paid later. Correct? Correct. Or, or, or does a person go, well, I needed help now, but for some reason or other, now I have an income or some source of money, so I can pay this all off right away before, you know, I leave this house. Right. The, the assumption that the heirs are going to pay it is that the person doing the deferral passes away Pass while away. still living that's in the not, house. That's not necessarily the case, however, right? Right. right. That's if right. Somebody could, just, could just be somebody's on, you know, has a tight, tight cash flow or expense, you know, uh, flow. And then whatever, they inherit other money or they, you know, start working whatever or, or find another source of funds and they go, hey, I ought to pay this lien off. And Paul, they yeah. don't need to defer the whole year's taxes. They can right. defer a portion of the taxes sure. or sure. that type so, of thing to make it understood. more affordable. Yeah. Understood. So somebody yeah. who's maybe got $4,000 in taxes and says, gee, I can only afford to pay you 2000 this year. Next year, maybe they can afford more. Maybe they can't. They have some flexibility. So it's it really comes down year. to the cost of that funding that we're right. providing. Right. right. And, and the payment comes with the, uh, with the, when they part with the home, whether right. that is an inheritance or whether they decide they're going to live with relatives in another state and right. therefore they sell this house and then okay. we get our money back at that point. Correct. Uh, the, or, what or, was, what was deferred they, plus the percentage. Sure. Or if a family member comes in and says, hey, I want to, you know, I want to help you out. I just won the lottery, whatever, or made a big sale or something else. So, gee, I know you need some money. I'm going to give you money. And one of the bills they pay besides whatever else is hanging out there yeah. is they go, let's pay off that tax lien. Right. And I, I feel the big benefit is the deferral. Yes. Um, that, that's the benefit. Is the right. Deferral. And that's not, not affected by this article. Right. And we're not affecting any of that. So it really comes down to the cost of the deferral over time. I'll right. make a motion to approve. I have another question. Oh, um, that's fine, Val. Go ahead. Val second. And the, the other question is, does it have to be a certain age? Was this elderly or just anybody? Senior. Huh? Uh, yeah, I believe you have to be 65. Yeah. Six, 65. And then the title on the deed, does it have to be in that person's name? What if it, it has a, a life estate or a trust? Uh, it would depend on how it's set up. If they're the beneficiary, they could do it, but the trustee would have to sign off on it. Typically, if it's in a trust, I don't think they're going to have cash flow problems to 
to okay. not and be able to pay their taxes. Can I make one more question here? May I throw one more thing on the floor? Which is, right now we don't pay a lot to borrow money, correct? No, no, we do not. Okay, so let's just just use the number one percent just for sure. example. You'd be we've decided that we're going to loan at five percent or four percent, so three percent above what we're borrowing at. Now, what's going to happen in two years? Let's say that two years go by and all of a sudden interest rates, because the Fed changes things, jumps to five percent, and we're borrowing at say three and a half. Okay, most people are borrowing higher than that, but we're starting to get three and a half percent money. We're going to have to come back and address this if we get upside down. Correct? This possibly this isn't, or or not? Right. This isn't a, a permanent change. Okay, so this is just for this year. Uh, well, no, it would be on there until it you chose until the town chose to change it back yeah. or okay. increase it or lower it. Okay. It I'm just, just wondering if we just shouldn't county. set up an index. I'm just suggesting maybe we would just set up an index that's so many points above whatever we borrow at, and then that number will get set the first of every year. We will establish okay. that new number and then change it year to year or something so we don't have to keep coming back. Except that you can't because there's a floor that's already um, dictated by law and a okay. ceiling. All right. Yeah, yeah. The, the lowest is zero, the highest we can charge is eight. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could build that into that index. If, if interest rates go up high, it will probably trigger a cascade of changes we'd have to act on, right? Okay. Absolutely. All right, fine. So we have a motion already, I think? Yes. We have a motion and a second. All right. Do we have any other discussion on it? Okay. So uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Go for it. Sure. All right. Five zero. Sure. Right. Article seven. Okay, this is this is uh, dependent upon us getting free cash certified by the seventeenth. Um, this is in keeping with our defense and death strategy, trying to manage the financial impacts of the uh, pandemic. Um, the idea is to put money into the general stabilization fund now while we have surplus money. Uh, if we need to take it out later on, we will not be drawing down the base amount of uh, stabilization, which is $1.7 million thereabouts, but we'll be drawing down on the excess that we uh, added to it. So at the annual town meeting, we put $183,000 into general stabilization. And I'm proposing that we put upwards of no more than 300000 into the stabilization account in case we need that for FY22. So we're taking nuts and we're burying, burying them. Uh, I'd prefer to do that with free cash because free cash is... Uh, subject to a majority vote, so somebody could take a run on it. Stabilization requires a two-thirds majority vote. Free cash goes to zero at every uh, July 1st. Stabilization does not. So it's a good good way to store mo excess money away in case of need in the future. Mm -hmm. Now, if we don't have stable, if we don't have free cash available to us. By October 17th, we're going to have to skip this article. Right. Right. Okay. I didn't hear the amount you said, David, 300000 Up to. Up to. Okay. Thanks. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the next one is the capital budget. Uh, we try to do capital in the fall and the, the, the operating budget is in the spring. And this is the first year that we're, we're doing a pretty good job of keeping to that plan. Um, there are DPW, the water, Cal the water Callahan well, 
uh, reconditioning well number one that's for twenty five thousand dollars we've got to do that from time to time in order to keep the the filtration uh, system open so that we can pump the water that we need and and mm -hmm. under drought conditions those wells take a beating so it's important for us to keep those uh, those filters as clog free as possible so the reconditioning will help with the water flow and we would be paying for this out of water reserves. Uh, Hadley Media Equipment, they have uh, money to spend down before the renewal of their next contract with Charter Communications. They are setting up in the old library and so they're asking for $18,000 for that project. Uh, IT upgrades with the select board, it's gonna be borrowing within the levy twenty thousand dollars if we can get a grant for for that i will withdraw this uh, article a police cruiser is this is a planned replacement will sixty three thousand dollars borrowing within the levy police ballistic vests uh, they need to be replaced every five years for twenty one two fifty borrowing within the levy uh, fire department administrative vehicles, 64575 again, borrowing within the levy, and this is a planned replacement. And fire department extrication airbags, something we tried to get at last December's special town meeting and was denied by the voters, $35,000. Um, the current equipment is worn out and busted. Um, this is a life safety issue, so borrowing, borrowing within the levy. And then the DPW mower for uh, doing the mowing at Saturka Park and Westry Common and other places, 40,000 for borrowing within the levy. Capital Planning Committee reviewed all of these and recommended 300 in favor. Uh, Linda, do you wanna talk a little bit about borrowing within the levy and the strategy moving forward for capital planning? Sure, am I? not seeing myself am i showing up okay um yeah i do want we should start by saying that all of this is within the levy that that means the uh the other way we borrow is subject to debt exclusion which would mean going to a ballot and having a a, a vote um at a, at a ballot and you know what a 30 to 60 days or something like that um the last time we tried that was a year ago now special town meeting 2019 that's when everything failed uh, we didn't do anything for annual town meeting, which only just happened a few months ago in June. We, nothing was put on uh, for there. And then um, it was decided that if voters uh, turned them down a year ago, uh, turned down debt exclusions a year ago, that was before our, the pandemic, that they certainly weren't going to be in any more of a mood to do it now. So um, the capital planning committee and with, with the cooperation and working together with department heads who had submitted articles, agreed that uh, to, to trim it down to um, amounts that could be safely borrowed within the levy. Um, at the suggestion of uh, fin uh, finance committee, or at least we we're all working together at it, but uh, Amy pushed to have the amount that we pay back within the levy increased by $100,000 last year, which allows us to, to um, that means that uh, when, we're, when we're paying off the borrowing within the levy, it's actually part of the budget where uh, there's no there's no new taxes raised for it. So it's $100,000 paid off for borrowings within the levy is the same as if you added $100,000 to any other budget. It's coming out of the, um, the uh, general fund. Uh, and the advantage to that is um, that we can, um, we can put them down in borrowing in this way. We don't have to do an exact amount. This year, the total um, well, if we get the grant, it will be even 20,000 less, but at this point, the borrowing is 243,825. Um, another year, it might be 350, it might be 500, it might be 150. But regardless of what is authorized at a town meeting, we're paying down within the budget the same amount each year. That's because we're doing short-term borrowing. Um, what's in the budget is based on our payments, not on what we actually borrow or the authorizations. So this allows us to keep an even amount 
paid, if you think of it like your home equity amount, but that you pay your, you have an amount that you're going to pay your home equity loan every single month, regardless of whether you have spent some more out of it or, or the, the balance has gone down. We have a flat amount that we pay out of our budget each year towards this. It's very much for practical purposes purposes fund, which I think is something we want to gear towards. This is a first step and let's see how this works and, and um, uh, it's, it's working so far. And I think that's a good way to take, to bridge the gap that we have between when uh, exclusions, uh, debt exclusions were passing very well in Handley and when they may again in another year or two, especially uh, when taxpayers realize that uh, the amount that we're spending on the borrowing uh, for the buildings is actually going to come in even less than we have anticipated. And we're going to start seeing that um, the debt exclusion payments coming down at a more, uh, more quickly and at a more rapid rate than was originally projected because we're borrowing at 2%, not 5%. So it makes a big difference with $14, $15 million. So um, this is a good way. We, have, we don't have our second bond out yet, so we don't have everything, all the pieces um, lined up yet, but we will by annual town meeting. Um, I, li I like this strategy, and I think that um, we should revisit for annual town meeting, we should revisit the concept of doing, um, erasing the money rather than have them borrow, borrow, borrow each of these individual ones. Perhaps we pay out of a capital stabilization fund and we, uh, and we put the money from the budget into that capital stabilization fund and, and spend so that we don't have to actually spend any interest on our, uh, on our capital. But we're getting there and I think this is a good start. So the borrowing is without any impact upon taxes. Uh, the danger of uh, trying to budget inside in, in the middle of a pandemic is, is that capital is an easy thing to cut uh, but what you're doing is you're you're sort of piling up a crushing obligation in future years. So, to the degree to which we can stay on top of our planned capital uh, expenses without an impact upon the taxes, I, th I think it's a, a good strategy. And Linda's done a lot of work to make sure that it's a sustainable strategy. Any any questions? I only have a question about one of the items, and it's, I don't want to get into micromanaging here, but I guess my question was just uh, on the fire department and in admin building uh, vehicle. That's what the chief's vehicle, or it would be Brian's vehicle. Okay. So the deputy chief. So that's. I mean, I assume we're buying like a, a fairly large SUV then for that kind of money. Yeah. I actually think that it's going to be the chief's vehicle, but the chief's vehicle will go to the deputy. It's a deputy, right. Okay. That's then corrected. Okay. Now, I just want to let you know, um, just because I am on the uh, capital uh, committee, that I, I really, that we started with at least, I think it was $1.6 million request. Okay. So they had quite a bit out there requesting it. And okay. we really trimmed it down a lot. I did not feel like spending the money at this time would be yep. a good thing. So some of the things um, just to throw out there, um, the upgrades, I think, um, to the select board, David trimmed that down. We, he, they were originally requesting more. The police cruiser, um, we had a long conversation with uh, Chief Mason. It, the, the thought was on this one is the next year might be even worse. So. We have the understanding mm -hmm. with the police chief because he has been on a rotation that we were doing one cruiser every year. We said, can you go without one? And he said, I probably could go without one one year, but I can't go without two. So we were thinking maybe this year is a better year to go with that one and then skip next year. So there's a good chance that that will be skipped for next year um, with that understanding. So that was with that. And as far as the uh, mower goes, that's another one. The mower, uh, that is one that is, I really talked to Chris quite a bit. At first I was very much against it, but he said that this is their main mower. This is the main one that they use. The one that they have been using has been breaking down. They're having a really hard time with it. So they have to replace their main uh, mower for the 
that mows the common and everything else. So, uh, and then Amy, as as, I have yeah. a question for you. What do they do with the old mower that doesn't work anymore? Is there a secondhand market or something, or do they sell it for parts? You know, is there some way to recoup something from the old one that doesn't work anymore? So, uh, yes, we either did use it as a trade in to lower the cost of the new uh -huh. purchase or we sell it on uh, uh, municipal on the open market and uh, somebody will bid on it just for the scrap value of loan. Okay, thank you. Okay. So we have to vote on these one at a time, right? Or can we do them all together? We'll do it as a package. Unless there's something that you would like to pull out, that wouldn't be fine. I mean, if there's something you're strongly against, I wouldn't want you to have to feel like you have to vote on it. Well, I guess the only question I have is, is the admin vehicle, can we go a year without that? I mean, I, I don't know how old the one they have now is. I, well, you know. I, we did talk to the police or the fire chief quite a bit about that. His, the vehicle that they have for the deputy right now was um, they have a, um, just to use, they found a, uh, a small, uh, they, they have it. I, I don't small think it, SUV. Was, it was very, and I'm not sure what vehicle it is, but it is something they got from, I think UMass okay. as a leftover. Um, I think that the fire chief has only ever had just the one, the only time. So okay. this would be this own, like, so they gave him this one. And then if this goes to him, this will be the first replacement that he's ever had. Um, if we push it off to next year, the list on next year's is just huge um, because there's a lot coming up next year. I mean, just right. next year alone, we're going to have to be looking at quite a bit, like Route 9 projects and everything. Okay. So if right. we're going to do it, I would say this would be the year just because we have it available in the levy. Okay. All right, motion. Oh, Linda wanted to say oh, something. Oh, sorry. Too. That's okay. But she's on mute. Linda, you're muted. <laughs> no, I was actually signaling to my husband. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're, you're doing fine. You got to be careful at auctions doing that too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, motion. A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, we have going into the CPA articles. The first one is for $100,000, it's for the, um, it's for the emergency, uh, COVID-19 emergency rental uh, housing assistance. And uh, I got the, I got the language from Amy. Uh, apparently you had a big discussion at CPA. You're approving this as, as CPA um, with conditions. You want to summarize the uh, article? Sure. I'm trying to find it. Where are you? What page are you on, David? Uh, it would be page uh, 13, top of 13. Okay. Okay. All right, I got it. All right, so the COVID um, relief fund. So right now, they the CPA, um, an application came in to CPA from the Housing and Economic uh, Committee. And a lot of towns are doing this now. They're trying to help out renters. It's not for people that own their house. It's not for if you have a mortgage. It's only for renters. And it's for renters in Hadley only. Now, the qualifications are very, um, it has to, yeah, it ha you have to be affected by COVID. Uh, you have to have show certain incomes um, that is only eligible. So um, many, many people will not qualify for this product. Okay, so the other thing is they're working with uh, looking like community action. So that's who they're going to contract with. So community action is going to um, uh, market this to all the landlords. It will go and um, uh, take the applications from the people and uh, then they will get the look to get the money. There will be a administration fee from community action. Now, what was going on is so far the CPA said to this, the housing committee said, okay, this, we believe this is good for our community. We'd like to help out, but we do have concerns 
such as what is the fee going to be? We don't want it, all our CPA money just to go towards administrative fees. So we want to definitely see what, what they're going to be taking. Also, they want to see the contract and see, you know, is what the eligibility requirements are. So it's more of a conditional uh, approval um, with this committee stating the, with a letter of agreement going back to say, does this, is this all okay to make sure that it, and Dylan will have quite a bit on this because he's the one that's going to be setting it up. <laughs> so, but um, anyways, uh, Dylan, if you want to mention anything else, just you know, maybe jump no, in. Oh yeah, you described it pretty well. Um, it's, yeah, it's a relief program for people that need assistance that have been impacted by COVID. Um, and yes, we are going to work with Community Action Pioneer Valley uh we're still working with them to figure out what the administrative cost would be that was the biggest uh, sticking point with cpa um and then also what the entire application process will look like uh amherst has one east hampton's in the process of setting one up sunderland has one um and so we're kind of cribbing off a lot of what they've done uh, which has been helpful and hopefully it'll be a little bit less expensive than what amherst put forward but Amherst did, I think, $250,000, and it cost them 39000 to administer. Yeah, we don't want to pay those kinds of fees. Yeah. All right. Sue, you had something to add? I just have a question. Um, so this money, is it going to the tenants? Is it going to the landlord? Landlord. OK. And what if the landlord owes back taxes? Hmm. Good point. <laughs> Good question. I, I just don't want money going. You must, you must do this for a living. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I just I, I just think we need to nail this stuff down so hmm. that you don't have our CPA funds going to a landlord that hmm. um, doesn't in turn pay mm -hmm. his taxes to date. Or hers. Would, um, would the agreement that you're going to sign, would that cover that provision? I haven't seen the agreement. I haven't seen anything on it, David. Actually, I was talking with Linda and, and you joined us in the office today. Um, it, I don't know what the ins and outs of it are, but I'm just trying to Kind of protect the, mm -hmm. the town's obligations. So, yeah, uh, good point. We're going to be vetted for the administration fee. So, why don't we just vet it for that and we could approve with, you know, the provision that it needs to be vetted for that? We have a, a process for, um, in, in other cases where they're applying for permits, where it, it, it goes the circuit for us to uh, acknowledge whether there's taxes owing or water sewer, back taxes, tax title. Um, so if it could enter that process, um, I don't know, I'm not using the right words, Susan, but how uh, that, that notification to specific departments? Prior to Prior. changing hands, yeah. Right. Uh, and I don't know whether um, the community development has anything like that. So I was just curious about this before we, you know, before we throw a hundred thousand dollars at this and and it costs us, you know, administration fees and that type of thing. How they handle it. Would it make sense to put this one aside since you're meeting with the select board tomorrow night? And we can do the research on that uh, issue and then we can bring it back for a vote tomorrow night. Well, here, here's the thing. The other thing is like, I don't, there isn't, the reason why it's written like this is because there is an agreement yet. Um, right. Dylan is working on that because he's one uh, co-chair with Molly Keegan for the housing uh, committee. So they're working with them. Then once they get an agreement, it still has to go through um, CPA, which we should add on what you just said. That should be just added on to that. So this is just saying if it all goes through okay with everyone, like what you just had to say. So it becomes that. conditional if and when. 
Yeah, it, so yeah. that you don't have to go back because if someone needs this, um, we need to do this because COVID is now, right? So we can't wait to another meeting. So we have to do this now, but we don't want to just throw away the money. So it's a provisional. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. I think so too. And I think it's an easy, it, we'll come up with the right language. It's easy to work the language into what you're coming up with, Dylan. So, And um, Dylan, I'm happy to, to talk to you about it at another time if you'd like. Thank you. So do we feel like there, do you want to push the, I mean, it's just, I, I feel like this is more of the concept that we're pushing, asking for town meeting to approve. Um, do we want to push, talk, put a vote in now? Do you want to see what select board has to say? Is there anything else? Or do you want to just vote on this? Um, I don't know if everyone is coming tomorrow, if you want to come tomorrow and do a, you know, if not everyone's coming, we should vote today. But if you wanted to try board meeting tomorrow. Personally, I would vote to approve this now since it's so provisional. Right. Okay. So yeah, do I, have a, I have a motion and, and a second. Is that correct? Second. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Okay. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, thank you. Articles 10, 11, and 12, why don't we handle them as a bundle because they're all gravestone restoration projects. Uh, North Hadley uh, Cemetery gravestones for 60,000. I think it's uh, printed in your uh, warrant that it's 65, but they've uh, sure. uh, reduced their request from CPA. Uh, the same again for Russellville Cemetery, 33,000 and the Hockenham uh, Cemetery wall restoration for 65,000. Um, do you want to handle them separately or together? Together. Together is fine. Yep, I'm good with together. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just, just let you know a little bit about all these. Uh, so they've been doing all the cemeteries one at a time. Um, so we voted on some of these in the past. Um, and so, and then also in the past, we just finished the last time the cemetery committee came to us and asked for a study for the Hockenham um, fence. And so that study came and now they're asking to do the fence now that they've gotten the study done. Um, so I think this is pretty much the end of all the requests for all the cemeteries. They've pretty much going through them all. And this is the end of it. Um, so this, this is where we are. <laughs> if you have any questions on particular details, um, each one, they, um, the cemetery committee uh, provided something to CPA, such as let's use the fence. They, they said the project 65,000. Cemetery is putting in the 5,000. Um, each one cemetery is coming up with either donations or money from the cemetery to put in a little bit. Uh, not a lot, but they are contributing a little bit on all of them. Um, the only one that looks different on the warrant, when you look at the warrant, I think is Russellville and how it's worded. And that's because um, it's coming out of historic and you have to, each, each um, year we put so much into the set-asides where we'll put so much into historic out of CPA, so much into open space and so much into housing. Well, when they come um, an application comes in and they have to fund it, they have to empty the set-asides first. If there's any money in the set-asides, they empty that and then they take regular from the general fund of the CPA. So only the first one looks a little wonky with Russellville saying they split the money in two. It's just because they have to empty the set-aside first. But other than that, they're all the same. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, uh, Article 13, CPA for a uh, study of the West Street Common uh, improvements there for $30,000. Um, this is proposed <laughs> by DPW. And oh, yeah. 
<laughs> he ignores me all the time, except when I'm in a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want me to jump in on this one too? Yeah, because uh, I'm a little hazy on this one. Okay. We can see why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this article, that, thirty thousand. <laughs> Sorry. This is a uh, DPW has requested a study um, to be done. Now, this is for the common. The the there's there's conditions on this one too. It's not just a regular study because the way the application came in. So normally when um, you put in an application to CPA, you put in the application, you give your presentation, and then the next meeting, um, they go to vote in there. If there's any questions, you're there to answer them. So Chris gave his presentation, but unfortunately he wasn't there the second meeting to answer any of the questions. And there was quite a few. So the questions being, you know, I think the CPA felt that this was, um, you know, they would like to see maybe if there's something that can be done with the common, you know, is there a plan? But the problem was, is they don't want to just throw $30,000 into a plan with what, what is it that you're looking to do? They don't really know what they're looking to do. They don't want, we don't want a whole study of $30,000 be used if they're planning. And then one of the things they mentioned is meters. Well, we don't want meters on the common. And I know there's a lot of people on town that don't want parking meters. Um, uh, we don't want them to be paved. We don't want it to be paved over. So there's a lot of concerns from all different areas of, you know, what is it that we want to see the town come and do? So we, the CPA recommended that yes, we will fund the study for the 30,000 with the um, conditions that they have a kickoff meeting with certain departments saying what, you know, what is it that we want to put the study for and also then get the um, public involved down the road because we want to make sure, you know, we're going to get a good study out of it and not something that's just going on the shelf that we don't want. That seems like so much money for a study. Yeah. I mean, I'm always astounded at the cost of a study. It sounds more like almost a design, like the next phase after a study. Yeah. yeah. Or we should have a study of the studies. Yeah. A preliminary, smaller conceptual, that, yeah, like what are they trying to do? Well, that's the whole purpose is what is it that you're looking to do? What's the study coming from, you know? So whatever they don't use is going to be sent back to CPA. Um, but we don't really know what their purpose is. I mean, we did mention one time uh, it would be nice not to have, um, it'd be nice to have underground utilities maybe um, or something like that. But we don't know what they, what their really purpose is. So that's why they have to give us more information before they spend the money. Oh, Sue has some questions. Uh, just as a taxpayer. Mm -hmm. Not as anything else. Um, I think until we have a concept of what we want to do, we probably shouldn't spend money right. on a study. Right. But I agree. I agree. It's like a fishing. It's like a fishing expedition. Let's have a study that's going to come up with what. Maybe we should put it in restrooms. Maybe we should do this. But how are we using the common? And we basically have the only uses of the common that I understand are at the parades. As a parade end point, they had the Saturday, was it Saturday or Sundays? They had the kind of beer fest thing going on there for a while. The asparagus festival. Thank, okay. And then you have the uh, uh, asparagus festival. And aside from that, it's become overflow parking for, you know, people on the street when they're having parties. And I know we've had some, some people have had issues with the corner where um, Eslon is, but, you know, um, you know, I, I don't I don't know what else you want to use this common for unless we're going to start putting in playing fields or other accommodations. And is that really, do we need to spend $30,000 on that? I, I think if we just held a public hearing where people just came with ideas, then at that point we could decide, do, do we like those ideas? And then if we need to do a feasibility study, that's when we put the money on the table. I agree. So I would, I'll make a motion. Do I have to make a motion to disapprove or do I make a motion to vote on it? Motion to move this question. How about that? Okay, so this uh, will make a motion to uh, what decline. Is it? decline. All right. 
So the motion right now is to decline this. Do Any I have a second, second at all? Don't all scream at once. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you. It's hard to know what to do because it's <laughs> we're missing so much, but I'll agree to disapprove. The problem is, is that's, I, I really think they put so many, uh, you should, the stipulations are so great. I don't, I think Chris will pass on this anyways right now until um, he has a, a better cons, you know, more of directions because the CPA felt the exact same way as okay. a finance committee does, but they didn't want to just talk. They wanted to let it go out a little bit. So they, they just put it on. So. Anyways, yeah, they, a lot of the same concerns were brought up. That's they wanted the guard dog to come out. <laughs> so here we are. We have a motion. Okay, we have a second. It. Can we? Let's okay. move along here. <laughs> so all in favor. All in favor of declining. Yes. Declining. A vote, a vote yes. You're declining. turning it down. Thank yes. you. Turning it down. Let's turn it down. <laughs> so for, okay. Just okay. for the record, I'm going to put down zero, five zero. So that's zero people in favor of. Okay. The, Oh, right, because of the way it's written. Okay, fine. Okay. And five against and zero abstaining. Okay. All right. So noted. Okay, so articles 14, 15, 16, and 17 um, don't have dollar amounts associated with them, but uh, you may decide that they are financial in nature and you may have an opinion. 14 is special legislation to change the Board of Health from an an elected board to an appointed board. 15 is the planning board uh, providing zoning definitions. This was deferred from the spring. 16 is planning board is to amend the zoning bylaws to allow transfers into the housing trust fund, uh, which is a companion to the article that was passed at the annual town meeting. And then finally, 17 is to take a step towards becoming a green community by adopting the stretch energy building code. Does the finance committee have an uh, interest in any of that? Um, I don't think so, unless anybody else wants to. The, the building code thing could be a big uh, financial burden yes. for people in the town. Too many building, yeah. So, uh, I would like to know more about that, I guess. But generally, those things are really expensive. So that could really stifle development in the town or just repairs in the town. Yeah, could trigger stuff. I think housing's already very expensive in this town. It's just, yep. it's just gonna get added onto the top of it and make our housing even more unaffordable for the young families coming in. I know, the, I know there's a committee working on this and they're very much proponents of uh, joining the green communities program uh, for the financial benefits as well as the impact upon the, the environment. Um, I have my own take on this situation, so I'm going to keep my opinions to myself. Would it make sense to bring this to the select board tomorrow night and then the people who are champions of this uh, issue can speak directly to it. I'm not prepared to vote on it now, so I would agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. So on this, on the green um, that they're looking to do to make our town be in part of this green community, I thought we almost already were, had the qualifications to be in the green community without adding on this? Uh, the Green Communities Program requires that we have meet five objectives. The first one is, is that we adopt a, um, a, ve a vehicle energy efficiency policy that we would be purchasing where they're marketably available energy efficient uh, uh, vehicles. We already do that for the most part. You know, obviously school buses and dumpsters and fire trucks don't fall into that category, but administrative vehicles and other kinds of passenger type vehicles, including police cruisers and fire administrative vehicles, they are energy, they are available as energy efficient options and we do purchase those. 
Um, the second uh, criteria is that you have to commit to a 20% reduction in your energy consumption over a, a five-year period. Uh, again, why wouldn't we try to do that? Um, the third is that you adopt the stretch energy code, which adds performance measurements to any construction. And I think this includes municipal construction. And I think, and I'm not sure, and I'll have this answered nailed down by tomorrow, that it involves renovations as well, as opposed to complete construction. Um, then what else do you have to do? You have to uh, agree to solar by right, which I think we already, uh, we may comply with. The planning board is looking into that and they'll have something to say at the annual town meeting. And then finally, you have, we have to agree to, um, um, what is this, the fifth thing? Oh, um, expedited permitting for any energy projects, which we already do. So it sounds to me like we have, you would to, to go forward with this, you're saying we would have to put those stipulations on that. So that if any new construction or adding on or even municipal buildings, now all of a sudden are all gonna have to have solar or something like that. And that's just gonna add on huge costs to everybody. And I don't, I mean, if, if, if what we're doing to make us green, fine, as long as we don't have to add on any new rules like that, I wouldn't, I would not think that would be a good thing. Yeah, yeah the devil's in the details on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if somebody's adding on to their house and they have to go and retrofit the whole house to meet this code, could make it absolutely impossible for someone to add an extra bedroom for a family member who's going to move in with them, you know, a senior who's going to, you know, move back in with their, with their uh, family um, to renovate a building and, you know, put ramps on or do things like that, if that's going to trigger all that. I mean, you know, here we are talking about wanting to make people who can't afford housing, get them a subsidy, give them help with taxes, and then we're going to make the cost of doing anything in the town so expensive nobody can afford it, well, Potential, potentially. Like I said, the, the people who are in favor of this are not here, and so I'll, right. I, I think it's best if we talk to them so that they can... Okay. In fairness to them, we'll hear it tomorrow night then. Yeah. I'd be okay with that. Yep. And Amy, yes. this is on, on behalf of Jennifer. She's asking that we be off by seven. Is that, uh, this, this is your eight oh, or nine minutes. I said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I said I would jump in. Done. <laughs> I think we're pretty much all set. I mean, it's all right. Are. That's the last one, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Well, that, that works. That's a good ending, Linda. <laughs> Great. As Linda said, if there's nothing else. Yes, and on that note, everybody have, have a, a nice night. <laughs> I have a motion to adjourn. Motion Second. to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, right. Aye and bye. See you later. Uh -huh.